Welcome to The Wine Down, an afternoon podcast where two techie blokes sit down over a bowl of wine and chat about what's happening in the world of tech. Enjoy while Scott and Nick open up about their week in technology. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to The Wine Down. I'm Nick and with me I have... Scott. Hello, Scott. How are you? Hello, Nick. Good. How are you going? I'm very well indeed. I'm very well indeed. It's another week. It's another week and we're someone new. We are. Well, so, importantly, where are we and what are we drinking? We, we are in the terrace in North Sydney. Aha, uh-huh. here we are on Mount Street. I've, I've never actually been here before. Oh, there we are. What do you think? I, I think it was rare to find a place I haven't been to before. <laughs> um, it's, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a cute little character sort of bar. I, interesting. they I noticed the uh, reduced food menu was um, uh, uh, interesting. Yeah, but I had a pie and it was gorgeous. It it was actually really good food, though. And we found a wine that's not just a pub Pub wine. wine. Well, it it sort of is a pub wine, but it's the uh, the pub wine of the premium producers, which was interesting. Okay. Which is actually good because I saw the other ones. Anyway, (laughs) this this wine is a uh, Hentley Shiraz. Now, um, 2017 Shiraz, this one's the Caretaker, uh, which is their sort of general pub series uh, wines. But Hentley down in the uh, Barossa, just down from sort of Nuriopta there in the um, the Seppeltsfeld region. Uh, If you ever get to go to the Barossa area, go there for dinner. They mm-hmm. have a, uh, a wonderful restaurant with a degustation menu of about 10, 11 courses, and they match the uh, food to the wines. Wow. They don't match the wine to the food. Whereas here they've got six different flavours of chips, yes, and right. you can match those to the wines. Exactly. That's, that's exactly <laughs> how it is. Um, and you'll um, you'll roll out of there, Yep. Uh, having drunk all their, all their you know, part of 10 different bottles of wine or whatever and uh, and the 10 different meals that go with it they're only little, little bits but it's it's quite enough it sounds awesome it's very nice mm. it's very nice it's a nice little dirt road in the dark with a taxi too anyway awesome <laughs> so today what are we talking today. about today so today is um i think we call it the um, evolution it, it, evolution it, of it services is kind yeah, of where the, we're going from that's right, modernizing the bookstore mm, modernize, <laughs> well, i'm trying not to modernize the that's bookstore. right I'm trying to actually come up with amazon or something that's, that's been my frustration this week but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit i suppose mm, okay that's kind of cool so i thought what i'd love to go through today is just you know you know scott and i you can tell by my gray hair and his lack of it have been in the it industry for a fair old couple of years um and it's it's you know Continually, I see. I was having a conversation actually in the um, the accounting technology fireside chat this morning, yeah. which we did at seven thirty, which is not the right time for a fireside chat. But moving on, where we were talking about, you know, Trevor in one of the businesses he's working in has an IT technician who's saying, "Well, I'll never go to Office three six five. I'm never going to go to the cloud. It's not where I want to be. It's I don't want to modernise." And I'm wondering how many people out there are stuck in this legacy way of acquiring IT services. Mm. Right? And, and so we, we talk about things being modern and different, but we don't spend enough time on what's better about it. So, yeah. so may, maybe if you want to outline you know, this kind of evolution, and then we'll look at what's good and what's bad at each one, and why you'd be thinking about them. Okay, no, that, that's fair. Look, there, um, there is always the thing about change for the sake of change. Mm-hmm. And that n- no one really wants that. Just... You know, Changing a, a fleet of uh, green cars for a fleet of red cars that are exactly the same thing mm-hmm. is not really going to improve your business at all. No. Uh, and but look, we we, we started with this um, this old break fix model back in the 1990s, or give that sort of thing where yeah, yeah you could go and um, if if your machine broke or something like that, you'd ring up the local IT people you deal with. They they come on site, they do a few hours work, they'd fix something and they'd run off and send you a bill. So break fix. Yeah, the old break, break fix. fix. When, so, it, when it breaks, we'll come and fix it. So, yeah, and I, people would bought that in different ways, didn't they? They'd either buy a little underlying contract or they'd buy a bunch of hours well, the, up front. The hours started to become popular sort of in those sort of late 90s sort of thing, yep. which was the easier way, um, I guess, from the provider's side of not having to send out individual invoices every time, um, but also getting paid in advance. Well, that, that works until you use it up too early and then you've got a new type of cash flow crisis. Well, yeah, but that's business management 101 sort yep. of stuff. So, yeah. 
Um, but I guess that that's sort of moved on into the what we call basic managed services. Okay, so before um, before we go there, because I get why you know you buy an hour of some you, you you go to the mechanics, they give you a quote, they fix your car. You yeah. go to an IT guy, they give you a quote, they fix your machine. What's wrong with that model? Uh, I, I guess. Um, it lacks engagement on anything more than just the it's broken front. Ah, so you're just, you're not getting involved in, and I'll use the car analogy again, you're not getting involved in choosing what type of car or which one you need. Do you need an SUV? Do you need a four-wheel drive? Do you need a, an RV? Do you need just a sedan? Do you need a sports yeah. car? It's, I've got this thing, now it's broken, I'll go, so go to you. Look, look at this way, we, we were looking at office space a couple of months ago mm-hmm. to, to move into and one of the places actually here in, in North Sydney was an older building and uh, we went up went in there and I noticed it had five separate air conditioning units in it wow uh, and I had a look at these and each one when it's on pulls four kilowatts of power this is in one unit this is in, this is in one sort of space a bit sort of well you probably can't see this but uh, half the size of this pub we're in it wasn't, it wasn't that big a space really wow and um you sort of worked out that if these things are on, that's 20 kilowatts of power they are, they are pulling on your power bill, by the way, in the office. Wow. Just to keep the air on. So that's coming up for like 15 bucks worth of power every hour. Uh, ballpark. Yeah, it's, it's not cheap. No. And the whole thing is your, your brake fix person will go and, oh, this air conditioner is broken. They'll come out and fix it, give you a bill for a few hundred bucks or whatever and run away. But they won't say buy a ducted no. system because it fixes all the, of it. The strategic engagement is, oh, my God, what are you doing this for? Right. Right. You know, you can actually pay for this in six months of electricity savings by putting in a modern efficient system that would be less power, less noise, et cetera, et cetera. And so, by so the way. So there's not a lot of, I, I get there's value in fixing things that are broken. Yeah. There's not a lot of extra value there, right? Not really. Not in the old brake fix model. Okay. No, I understand. So, so where did that move? Where did we go from that? So look, uh, oh, look for, uh, for us, we started doing managed services around '99. So now, 1999. Now, yeah. I remember sitting at a CompTIA event. Uh-huh. And for those of you who don't know, CompTIA is the largest trade industry association in the world for IT, um, and they deal a lot with managed service providers. And one of my favourite quotes from someone on stage from Customerland was he was saying. Nobody in the world, except IT managed service providers, really understands what a managed service is. There's only a market for seven computers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. IBM. <laughs> yes. Um, look, the managed services is a very broad term. It's a bit like art. What exactly is art? You, you can't really put a specific definition on it. It could be anything. I could say that this glass of wine is art in its purest form. But... Yeah, that's, that's why you didn't get any degrees in creative stuff, isn't it? That's why we hire external marketing exactly, people and exactly. art and creative people, yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's not try and define art. Let's you, stick to our knitting, shall we? I noticed you picked that up very quickly. <laughs> um, okay, so ma- managed services, not as if you could open up a, a, a dictionary and look online and say, here are the six things you need to do to be a managed service provider. Um, okay. It's not like, for example, an accountant that needs to pass certain qualifications to get an accounting degree. It, this is more broad, but largely it's around taking what used to be that break fix approach and saying we will for x dollars a month do as much break fixes as necessary to keep your environment running yep that, that was the sort of starting point of managed services and that also put the onus back on the msp that said look if this thing breaks twice a month then you've got to keep sending someone out twice a month at your cost maybe it's time you fixed it properly uh, so you so okay so let me try and understand it Instead of saying, we'll charge you for every hour we work, yes. we'll say, we'll charge you this price, yes. irrespective of the number of hours That's right. we work, and then you need to go and make life better yes. by actually going and fixing some of the things that aren't working, etc. That's right. And the whole concept is, well, if I'm now responsible and in incurring the cost of making this work, why don't I either fix it really well so that it stops breaking or strategically recommend this has got issues, it's going to keep breaking, your business is going to keep getting impacted, we're not going to be able to fix it properly. How about we look at upgrading this to a different type of server or a different yep. type of system or whatever the problem is? Um, but at so that stage, you'd probably still charge them to upgrade them to the new oh, server, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Like, look, the, look the, you find a, a strategic engagement between an MSP and a client. The, the, the cost of the IT should not be the prime driver in there. 
right. there should not be discussions around professional service fees or that sort of thing. And of course, you, you do it initially to make sure that you know, you're you're doing your due diligence and, and that you're not paying too much or too little yep. for the type of business you've got. But beyond that, you should be more focused on the outcomes being delivered and the value being produced rather than three or four cents on the bottom line. Okay, cool. So we've got that. We're now in the beginning of the 2000s. Yeah. We've just come off out the dot-com crash, you know. Everyone's lost their shirt on you know, cats.com or pets.com or whatever it was. Uh, pets. Pets. Oh, no, that's a story in itself. Yeah, we'll we, do, we'll do we that. should come back to that. We will yeah. come back to that one. <laughs> that could be a podcast in itself. Yeah, we're going to do a whole series of I remember when and we'll move from there. But <laughs> give it 10 years to a bit older to do that. But So what? get to 2010. No, a decade ago. So, so 2010, we've got some good managed services in place. There's actually some good structure in there. There's generally regular reporting with clients. You're doing some uh, uh, quality assurance around the whole environment. You're looking at service delivery management across what you're doing. Uh, depending on who the client is, you may be attending their regular audit reviews. Right. So if the client uh, is in the financial services industry, for example, uh, and they have under, for example, APRA guidelines, they have to show that every quarter or every month they are reviewing all the issues in the business. You, you may be a part of that review, mm -hmm. um, such that an auditor can come in and say, okay, you've got your strategic partners in the loop, tick, we'll, we'll count on that. Um, and you're really trying to engage with the client around um, and then it was growth. There's a fair bit of growth up to about the sort of 2011, 2012 sort of mark yep. um, around how can we do more in your business and clients wanting to go into more areas, so expansion into a little bit of simplicity, but a lot of it was just pure growth. Yep. Okay. Drove that. So, so that's getting a bit more strategic. It's about helping the client do better. Yes. So it becomes this, this mutually beneficial symbiosis to use big words. Well this is where you become the strategic partner and in larger agreements or larger clients you are actually listed as a uh, material outsourced entity right. because you are now a key part of their business. But I found when people went for those outsourcing agreements, right, especially the larger ones, oh, yes. the outsourcer would come along, buy all the assets, rehire all the people, and then sweat those assets for as long as they well, humanly could because they'd underpriced it in the it, beginning. This, this was the way those contracts worked. You would Originally, the larger um, deals, you would do anything you had to do to win the deal, and then anything you had to to not provide something that cost you Yep. cost going forward unless it was absolutely necessary. Okay. So yeah, if, a, if you bought a machine and in and you had in your cost said that machine's going to be you know, an asset for five years, then it would sit on that desk for five years. Now, too bad for the poor person there trying to do financial modelling on a five-year-old computer. They may say, this machine is not suitable for what I'm doing. Now, I'm, I get that, but the business, when it did the outsourcing deal, agreed yep. that that asset would be useful for five years. So... So I've seen lots of that, right? There's, there's lots of that around. And I think for some organizations, that's left a bad taste in the mouth because that's still called managed services. It, 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 it is. Look, I don't think we use the term outsourcing very much anymore. No. Um, just because it does have that. I, mean, it's coming, I think it's coming back a little bit. But um, yeah, that, ultimately, that was managed service. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. So, so let's talk about where we are now okay. or, or where we're trying to get to or where we aspire to be now, where the where the really forward-looking businesses are and where the really yeah. forward-looking providers are and where we kind of believe the rest of the industry is going to head to. Yeah, and this is, this is the whole strategic approach about engaging with clients above the IT layer, mm -hmm. looking at their business and going, hey, I know IT really well. I know how to solve what you're doing there in a more efficient way. It'll save you money. It'll save you uh, time and effort. You, can, you may use less people in order to perform the task using technology and you can redeploy them into other parts of the business. Um, that level of engagement now is very key to what people are looking for. Um, I know that if you just go and knock on, for example, the doors of 100 businesses and say, hey, we do IT, you know, can, can we do your IT? They, it's not really an exciting topic anymore. Yep. It's sort of like, you know, can I wash your car for you or something like that? There's automatic car washes. There's, yeah, it's, not a, it's, it's not a thing. Yeah, so you don't go to a service station anymore and they check your water and your oil and, and, and the guy comes out and fills your car with fuel. That's all gone, right? That's, there. that's, that's similar a, that's, here. That's all the value add thing because it's such a commoditized entity. Yep. And look, basic IT is very commoditized these days. Um, we find that you really need to be, and 
you really need to be engaging on business pain points and very few businesses have you know, my IT providers pretty average they're not helping because even I've noticed that even average IT providers tend to have stability amongst their client base yes it's only if they're really bad or they go out of business or there's a force to make a change mm. things keep breaking the business is impacted making IT the pain point that a change is made okay that's, cool. not, that's not as often. No, no, it's not. So it's this interesting, slow-moving world. Mm. Yet, let's talk on the value side. Mm. What are some of the value? And let's use some examples. What are the what are the value that customers can get out of a proper strategic IT engagement? They're probably not thinking about today. The, well, look, go back a step. The biggest issue I see around the value engagement is that clients don't understand what IT can do. Mm -hmm. That beyond years, okay, there's a there's a laptop, there's a PC or a Mac running office and doing whatever else. Yeah, we get all that. IT's a lot more than that these days. You've got wonderful SaaS applications hosted in the cloud that can do automation. You've got a lot of tools you can have on site in your business. You've got a lot of a lot of problems that have been solved by other people and you don't know how they've solved them. Yep. And in the IT industry, we can look globally at solutions to those sorts of problems and work out that, hey, other people in your industry are solving what you're doing this way, and they seem to be doing it at you know, half the price or you know, twice as fast as what you're producing. Why is that? Is that, the way you're doing that, is that so unique to your success as a business that you need to do it differently? Or if you outsource that, and I'll use that outsource term very carefully. Loosely, yeah, carefully, yeah. yes. <laughs> Let's just say you outsource that component to um, someone that did exactly what those people are doing now. Mm. Would your business continue to run and would it all be good? And the whole concept is not so much to say go and outsource all the parts in your business because that, that's a whole new bucket of worms. Yep. More that can you improve the way you're doing things by looking at how other organisations in the world are doing it and bring yourself up to what best practice looks like. That's interesting, fascinating, I, and kind of cool. I doubt you would find any business anywhere that would be considered best practice at everything that they do. Yeah, no, you're, you're definitely. Yep. Okay, in which case, there is something that that business can learn by looking at who is best practice in that field. Yep. And if we did that, does it improve our efficiency? And I'd say, yes, it does. Well, I'd also say there's very few people out there who aren't IT and machine learning and AI specialists who understand the capability of what technology can actually bring. Well, well that's just it. I mean, I, I'm just the first thought that came to mind. I remember um, a year or so ago, you took an organization's previous 18 odd months of sales data and predicted the next 18 months based upon that using a whole bunch of AI, machine learning mm -hmm. and everything. And it was more accurate, considerably more accurate. It was way than, more accurate than the sales than what the sales team yeah. actually produced even though they argued against it. Mm. Um, and now we've got a year of hindsight in that. I can sort of look at your numbers and say they were a lot more accurate. <laughs> there you go. But that's just applying technology. Yeah. And if you made business decisions based upon more accurate data, well, you'd be so much better off. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That was a, it's a fascinating run through the last you know, 30 years of IT there, Scott. It, it is. It is. That, that sort of comes to my frustration point this week. Go for it. I, I keep running into... Um, uh, either vendors in our industry or either, even other MSPs that are trying to build a better bookshop. Build a better bookshop. Explain what you mean. Okay. So we all know that we um, used to be, you know, these things called bookshops. They yeah, were yeah. old physical copies of books and you could go in there and browse them and buy them and take the book home to read. And mm -hmm. eventually online shopping came along. Amazon came along. Amazon Books initially. Um, and people started ordering books online. Okay, so they've found a more effective retail delivery method for the product. Mm -hmm. But then electronic versions of the books came online and things like Kindle and so forth. And you didn't even need to have the physical book anymore. All of a sudden, if you want content now, you can just go into a browser or into an app on your machine. Click, click, click. There it is. Okay. Uber and the taxi. Entire different model yep. of transportation. That disruption. Yeah. I've seen a lot this week, and to be fair, it's, it's, it's a lot in general, but it just popped up a few too many times this week of organizations trying to make a better legacy solution, mm -hmm. building the, the better mousetrap when perhaps there was a whole different a way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, you know, oh, we could add new servers to a site and do this, or we could, you know, update the way we're doing this function and 
in reality, why are you doing that at all? Why not move that to the cloud? Or why not modernise the business? Yeah, remove the legacy altogether and make the efficiency gains appear. It was funny, I, I had the opposite. So I was having a conversation with a client who I'm going to go and see towards the end of this week. And he, he was saying to me, um, I've got all these processes in my business that I want to automate. And then he thought for a moment and he went, perhaps I should just talk about what we want to achieve. <laughs> and then we can use technology to redefine the business process. I, I love and the forward thinking people. I love that. That's, yes. I can work with that customer. Yeah. yeah. This is, this, is, this is where we've been having fun, really removing legacy from businesses mm. and saying, look, all that's gone and your business is still running. It's automated, it's more efficient. Yep. It's, it's still effective. So effective versus efficiency. Effective, are you producing a result? Yep. Eff efficiency says how, well, quickly how, are you how quickly yeah. are you producing it? Yes. You've got to make sure you're effective first, otherwise you'll very quickly produce the wrong result. Okay, but, uh, so, yeah. so we've got the effective and the efficient, but the new thing we're coming up with is this sometimes these radical shifts, and I think we can reduce risk. Yes. And I think that's something people don't think about a lot, is if you, you put this into the cloud, which rarely, rarely goes wrong, which is up all the time with good data oh. backups, suddenly you've de-risked a whole bunch of your business. Hmm. Now, I had customers when we were first rolling out cloud, well, they went, what's the benefit of cloud? I said, well, if your building collapses, yeah. not that that would ever happen. No, how would that happen? <laughs> you could all go and work in Maccas on their free Wi-Fi and you'd still be fine. Yeah. Oh, your data may be copied, but <laughs> that's a security issue. Time for another topic around that. <laughs> it is. That was brilliant, Scott. That's super interesting yes. today. Yes. Well, hopefully you're less frustrated next week. Well, hopefully I'll work on more modern IT solutions next week. There we go. There we go. Well, that was cool. Everyone, thanks for listening or watching. I hope you enjoyed the um, weekly wind down this week from the um, Terrace Hotel, Mount Street, North Sydney. Yes. Um, that was lots of fun. If you've got a comment or you want us to discuss something, leave it in the comments below. Give us a like. Hit the subscribe button. So all I've got left to say is thank you, Scott. Thank you, Nick. And have a good day, everyone. Bye. See ya.